What's going on guys, Vic to be back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today we're going to be doing part two of this haul slash no I did not rob a convenience store and no it's not from a storage unit. Uh, pretty unique story on this one, we're going to be talking about the Chicago Gaming Company Arcade Cabinet, the Cocktail Table, and these vending things. What is happening? <laughs> Stay tuned for this one. <laughs> I'm excited to see this. We gotta see this. Let's do it. <laughs> You know the social media plug, be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. You would see everything, 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 everything. Like when I was loading and unloading these from the truck, the whole thing with the crane coming to me broken and now proudly working amazingly. Just, what are you waiting for? You should follow me, click that link tree down below. Also be sure to like and subscribe and do all of that. Yes, uh, this is fun. <laughs> I love everything and anything, gaming, arcade, pinball, I love everything. Uh, I, I don't think I ever get enough of it. I'm always up for the challenge, uh, especially when it comes like this, the crane game. Uh, you know, you'll see the video on the crane game, go back to watch that video about the backstory on it. I don't mind trying new things and uh, it just keeps the blood flowing and I obviously like building my arcade cabinets a lot, but I'm also down to do other stuff. This one today we're going to be looking at, because I don't know the outcome of this really, we're going to be just looking at the Chicago Gaming Arcade Cabinet, which I'm very excited to see. I have yet to power this thing on. And we're also going to look at the cocktail table, and we're also going to look at the vending machines. I'm going to first basically tell you what's going on, um, how I acquired these, and uh, then we'll talk about the plans for them. Now this is pretty cool because it's a prime example. Everybody always looks at my truck. It's actually funny because I mentioned the story about this customer here and it all pertains to my truck. Uh, my truck is a leased Ram and it's the best thing I ever done. I did need a pickup truck, especially if I'm gonna be hauling the four by eight sheets of laminated birch to cut my cabinet. So I knew I needed a truck. I've had that truck now for three years. It's, it was a 39 month lease. Uh, but the lease is almost up. I will be getting another Ram. I always lease my cars. But basically, I'm very just happy with myself, and this is, I mean, you're talking three years now. I'm just so happy that I just pulled the trigger and put vinyl stickers all over that truck. With my logo, Game Case Arcades, Vic VP, I have the Linktree QR code. It is the best, no joke. I mean, it wasn't, it's not really the correct vinyl for a car, but it's been on my car for like three years and it worked out and it paid for itself basically, but it's the best money I've spent and it wasn't that expensive. Um, but yes, I've always had some people, even my parents and like even like my neighbors are like, is this even legal? Can you put your logos on, on a car? I was like, yeah, you could do that. It's not, there's nothing illegal about that. You can't put strobes in the underglow. That was from my younger years. I used to have a 370Z. I used to have a Maxima, I used to have an Infinity. Q60 and I had underglow. I used to be big on LEDs and HID kits and car audio and the sub. Yes, I was that and I was, a, I was Italian music and bass and techno and house music. That is prime college days. <laughs> so yes, with the truck, with the logos, I've gotten many, you know, local inquiries. It's probably the best thing I've ever done. Again, be sure to watch the crane game. You'll hear the details on that. Uh, basically I pulled up and someone saw my truck and was like, whoa, took a picture, scanned the QR code and then reached out to me within 10 seconds. So same kind of situation now when it comes to these. So this one's kind of unique. It's actually, uh, it's actually great. Uh, I do love to help, especially when it comes to gaming. Anything gaming, arcade, I just like to help. So I can't go too much into detail uh, about the person, but Long story short, basically he's got some personal issues going on. He's had these lying around in the house and he goes, Hey Vic man, can you help me sell these? I said, yeah, I'm always down. I'll come down, pick it up. He is about maybe 10. He was about 10 miles out. It wasn't that bad. It was like a 30 minute drive. Um, I went to his house and he didn't realize I was going to pick these up. I was like, yeah, man, I'm here to pick it up. Like, let's not waste time. Cause it's just been in his basement for, I mean, this one he said, if you do this one, this is made in 2006 apparently, so do the math on that and how long it's been there. The cocktail table, same thing, he said he bought it for the kiddos when they were little. 
The cocktail table, he's only turned it on like seven times. The condition on the cocktail table is practically brand new. It's not a scratch on it. But basically, he's going through some personal issues. And he says, hey, Vic, man, if you could just help me sell these things, get it out of the house, uh, you know, we'll do a 50-50 split on whatever you sell it for. I'm always down for that. That's always cool. It's also, it makes, I told, I told him, I said, listen, it makes for good YouTube content. Uh, I like making the videos and I like talking. And you guys like the view and thank you for watching. But uh, it makes for cool stuff. And it also gives me like the experience of stuff that I've never experienced before. I have never experienced a cocktail table before. Never seen one in person. This one's just fairly on the smaller side than what I was expecting. But it's cool to have it in here. And then this one, when he sent me a picture of this, I was like, whoa, I definitely want to check this one out. Because this is, you know, this is kind of advanced for its age, I would assume. I have not turned these things on. I hope they work. They were basically, this one, when I came to pick it up, this one was buried under clothes. Like jackets over it. And that one had like a blanket over it next to his desk. And it had a bunch of boxes on it. So... That's always kind of the sad thing. I feel really bad. You know, people invest in these and then all of a sudden, after like a week or two of playing it, it becomes a coat hanger. <laughs> then we're gonna go into this. This one again, he said something about his uh, partner was in this like vending thing and uh, if I could sell these, he's, that's great. We'll probably start with these real quick because there's not really much to talk about with these kind of carousel things. So the little like unique thing about these, this. Uh, this right here, he was telling me that his partner, he's in like the, the vending business. And uh, I'm surprised that, you know, I do see these on occasion. Um, it's actually kind of cool. The actual person that reached out to me, he is a dentist. He has a dentist office that's apparently carnival themed. And I said to him, I was like, why don't you put these things inside of your dentist office? Because, I mean, kids gravitate towards games. Why not? Uh, these originally were in his office, but then he took them out. Uh, but basically he said to me, he's like, if I put these arcade cabinets, the kids are going to destroy them. I was like, oh, I was like, I've kind of seen that, uh, but you got to maintain it. He goes, no, Vic, like I spent a lot of money on these. I don't really want kids to destroy it. I bought that for my family. Uh, but again, it's been sitting, it's been sitting in his basement. I'm like, you have nothing to lose. Like, but he's like, whatever, Vic, just try to sell. Anyway. This one right here, I mean, these are kind of cool. I have no interest in these. Uh, it's, you know, it just kind of brought me back memories growing up. You know, we used to have, uh, we used to have, uh, it was like two of them. They were gray. There was three slots, but it was, it was like loose candy, like M&Ms. You put the quarter in, you spin, you get some candy. Awesome. Uh, you know, but then sometimes, you know, if you look very carefully, you might find friends that wind up inside of those things. And uh, yeah, now it's like, I, I'll never put, loose candy anyway <laughs> um yeah this is unique uh and basically he told me that this was in the dentist office you would go to the front desk after your cleaning uh it was for the kids he would give them a token this could take quarters or a token it's the same size thing and you know he had like bouncy balls and i don't know some random toys on it uh he's actually got five of these so what's actually very funny with this kind of situation i always tell people because i, I get the situation a lot Hey Vic, help me sell it. I just tell people, listen, I'll help you sell it, but I hope you don't have a set amount in mind for you to get it. Um, usually if a customer is like, for example, let's take this for example, right? If this person said, Vic, I need $100 per, I don't see that happening. I'll try. I'll try to get that for you, but you know, in this day and age, especially with Facebook Marketplace, people are gonna throw you offers and you know, I basically say like, how desperate do you need this gone? Do you need this gone tomorrow? Or is it okay if you sit on it? Basically, I have this up on Marketplace. I have a lot of five of these. Only thing is that this one is missing a mech, but he apparently has a mech. That's kind of what also gets annoying. Vic, I have keys and I have the mechs. You, I just gotta find them. It's kind of difficult in that because I wish you gave it to me now. I would, I would fix this now. Because right now, the ad shows one broken. And then that's where people go, you want 100 bucks for this? I'll give you 10. Cause it's broken anyway uh all in all he's got five of these i don't see it me personally like i'm not a fan of these uh one guy hit me up on facebook and was like can you put loose m&ms in it um and can you set it to free play uh i was like i guess you could there's basically a, a little thing that blocks the the thing from turning so you can remove the thing and then it'll be free play 
Um, but yeah, not really much to talk about with these. This is what it is. He did also throw this in, but this one's actually a novelty thing. This doesn't actually take money. This just spins. This doesn't have an actual coin mech to it. It's got a little circle here, but it doesn't do anything. There's, and there's, honestly, there's not even a way to get to the coins if you put coins in this. So yeah, as far as like this vending thing, I basically took it. Uh, I wasn't planning on taking it that day. He kind of just was, I was there and he's like, Vic, take these. I was like, okay. You know, I'll, he had five. I was like, I'll take two because I don't have that much room. I'll take two. If we get a hit, we get a hit. Right now, currently, I got an offer for two for a hundred bucks. You, I, I, th that's kind of what's difficult in this situation. Um, for the arcade games, he told me, Vic, whatever you could get, you know, get. I know arcade. I could do stuff to it. That's what I'll explain later on when we get to those. But when it comes like this, there's not, I can't modify this to play a thousand games. I can't do a thing with this. Um, so I told him the offer. He said, that's not too bad of an offer. It's not what I want, but it's not too bad. I, right now, I'm waiting for somebody that wants the whole lot. So, and these are like commercial grade. This has a heavy base to it. Um, only thing that kind of sucks is this. It, it's got one key. Cause everybody's like, does, is there keys to the, to the coin doors? I'm like, there is no coin door. You have to actually take this apart. It's kind of like a tower. So the top comes off, you take the four canisters out, and then you got the money in this box. If you want to reach this box, you got to take this off, and then these four off, and you got this one. It is what it is. Uh, but yes, there's your little vending thing. Uh, I have zero interest in these, but people like them. Next. All right, next we're going to talk about the cocktail table. Again, when I picked these up, we didn't turn them on. He turned that one on very quick, the Chicago gaming one. Uh, we heard, I heard the CRT turn on, uh, and then it gave it like a logo, like a Chicago gaming logo, and then went off. But we're gonna see that one. I'm very excited for that one. That's why I'm gonna say that one last. But let's check out now the cocktail table. I do have it on my own like dolly. So at least we kind of turn around, we can see it. I do, I mean, it's nice. Like I said, the cabinet, as you can see, there's really not even a scratch on it besides like the team molding a little bit here but i could probably just clean that honestly uh it looks cool i mean it's nice you can see it's two-sided three buttons it looks like an industry lorenzo joystick it's got a very thick piece of glass on this so again didn't test it there so let's just plug it on in mm -mm -mm. we flip the switch Nothing. That's not good. <laughs> let's, let's open this one up. Got you there. Let's open this up. He did give me keys. So that's always good. It's always a plus. Let's see what we got going on. So we're going to have power. It's got like the rocker switch. Oof. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> So it is running a 60 in one board. Coin door. I see the amp here. There's like an arcade power supply. I see audio amp. No power though. All right. I see a fan. Okay, let's see what happens now. Got to figure out why this isn't powering on. And I see the screen above. It is a flat screen. So that's cool. All right, we got to figure out what's wrong. Basically, after like five minutes of just kind of looking around, I realized that this has a fuse. That's usually the best way to start. This is kind of just a regular fuse, but it's I can't see the metal. Let's try this again. Put this in. This was fairly tight. Moment of truth. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Just a little fuse. Screen's on. Yep, it is a 60 in one. It's got a fan. Cool, I'd rather honestly, this is like clean. Uh, I'll take you inside. I mean, again, 
Uh, he's had this sitting for years, but look at the inside. Not even like a, not even like dust. The board looks brand new. Again, it's a 60 and one. I don't know who mounted that board. It's a little lopsided. It does have the feet. It's got a power supply here for the monitor. You can see up above. It's basically a flat screen monitor. This does not accept HDMI, this monitor. It's kind of cool. I'll measure it out. Got the speakers on the outside. Let's turn this around. Let's see what it looks like in the coin door. You can see the top. We have the screen. So a little Miss Pac-Man promo. Joystick seems okay. It definitely was used. You can see the buttons when they kind of move around like that. Just got to adjust that. I am anxious to see this. That's uh, that's not the right joystick. <laughs> this is not a four-way joystick, so we're gonna open that one up. But yeah, you can see uh, that's some Pac-Man. Let's take a look at the coin door here. So you kind of see like the speakers. That's pretty nice to see. It's a nice little grill. It's kind of a basic. All right, you got a coin mech, so that's always good. Interesting. It's not your really standard coin mech. This is like a. What you call them? It's a Chinese one. That's cool. Got your amp. You got test and then service. That's probably for 16 one, obviously. Let's see if there's any money in it. So not bad. Pretty nice to see, you know, coin doors. So basically you could have this on location. Nice. It's a nice constructed uh, cabinet. Can't lie to you. It's very nice. Let us see. Nothing really. Let's, uh, I could see the amp here. You see the audio. He's there's basically no attract audio. Usually on these 16 ones, it's that annoying music. Player one. Let's see. So cool. Yeah, it's a 16 one. It's a basic 16 one. This joystick though is. Let's run Pac-Man. Let's run two player. Just to see both sides. Cool. Whoa. <laughs> So somebody messed around in the dip switch settings. This is right. Let's see if we can go up, left, right. Not bad. Player one is okay. So I'm going to open this up. I'm also intrigued to see this. Let's check out player two. So, whoa. Uh oh. I can't do nothing. <laughs> That's not controlling player one, is it? No. Uh oh. I got no action on this joystick. Oh, I don't even hear them. Oh, the micro switch isn't even clicking on this. Oh, let's, uh, let's get out of this. Hold on. So this has like six lives. So while we wait for that, you can just hear player two. That you can hear the micro switch click. Nothing there. I hear the switch. Nothing there. So the right and the up, micro switches are not clicking. So this is kind of cool. I do like this design. It's got the piano hinge for this one piece. I don't like the separation of this, but then again, it's a 60 and one. So let's see how these work. Cool. All right, cool. And what the hell is that? <laughs> What? There's no gate on this. This isn't even... This micro switch is bent. Wow. Whose design is this? I've never seen that. Look at this. There's no gate on this. What the hell? Oh, now all of a sudden... I'm hitting all four. I didn't even do anything. That is atrocious. That is a no. <laughs> uh, again, you can see, we just gotta basically tighten up the nuts here. Can't do it one-handed, but I'll tighten that up. I mean, it's a cool design. I do like this piano hinge. The joystick, I don't agree with. I wonder if player one is the same. But now, all of a sudden, now it's good. That's annoying though. That should not be like that. That that's most likely coming out. Let's take a look at player one side real quick. Is it the same? 
I would assume it's the same style joystick. Again, this customer isn't the modding type. Yeah, look at that. I've never seen that. There is no gate on that. Does it? No, you still technically, it's still technically an eight way with that. That is not fun. That kind of sucks. But anyway, we got the cocktail table. It's pretty cool. It's a 60 in one. Can't really complain. I do wonder if this 60 in one, I don't want to play Pac-Man actually. I wonder if this 61 is, uh, does it maintain high score? So I'll play a quick game of Galaga and then let's see if it maintains it. All right, you know, Galaga is my game. So 25,000 just for now. I'm not going to waste time playing it. So made it to see if this saves high score. So again, 25,750. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. It's nice. It's cool. I do have it on my dolly. Oh, I put my initials in too. Yeah. All right, so now it it ended the game. So if I go back into the game, do I have? I do have the twenty five seven fifty, but I'm gonna turn this off, and we're gonna see if it could keep the memory. That's usually what I have an issue with these sixty one. So we'll let that boot up. I'm gonna measure out the screen. I mean, it's cool. Me personally, I probably want bigger screen. Uh, that's number one. 100%. Uh, games like this, this is vertical oriented games. I would probably want a vertical cabinet. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll, at the end of the video, I'll tell you the plans with these two, but let's see what happens with this cocktail table. Moment of truth. So if I go to Galaga, boom, does not save. It'll say saved if you leave it powered on. Again, you can see somebody basically definitely played around with the dip switches, but there you go. A very common issue I've always had with the 16 and ones. And apparently again, I guess dated, there's been that one time, I don't see the, that's on the other side. It's been that one time where it saves the highest scores, but as you can see this, high scores are gone. Next, let's load this up. So I'm excited for this one. I'm usually never excited for like old arcade cabinets uh you know i'm at a state now where it's like i would rather build new normally when i see any old arcade i mean you're talking about original arcade i shouldn't use the word old or else i get flamed in the comments but original arcade games i usually don't look for anymore i used to retrofit them and then i got it was just no more because the crts usually go but this one i'm excited for because it's actually a very nice great conditioned 100 percent home use only cabinet uh, not a ding at all on this, but I'm really excited to see the CRT. It is a 25 inch CRT, not to mention this has a trackball. It is a hap trackball on this. Sounds a little rough, but let's turn it on. You can hear the boom. So we turned it on in his place, Marquis on. I just saw the screen here. I'm hoping you can see it. I'll bring you in close. I saw the screen and I was like, wow. No, like, there's no issues with the screen. Not to mention the color on it is amazing. But I didn't get past this. We turned it off. Um, I believe this is, like, the setup that's, like, it looks like Hyperspin, I, I believe. Um, I'm anxious for this one. I'm excited for this one. I'm, I got it. Wow. This doesn't look like Hyperspin. Let's bring you in. Let me make sure you can see everything. So now looking at the camera, you do see like the scroll effect. You don't actually see that live. That's just how cameras are. Um, it is a great screen. I love the screen. I was expecting the thing that looks like Hyperspin. Street Fighter 2. Wow, this only has 100 games on it. Oh God. Okay, so again, we have a Chicago Gaming Company Ultimate Arcade 2. I'm going to have to do a quick search on this. And the marquee up here, it says 2006. This was made in 2006. Hey, it's got a fair interface. Arkanoid. But it's only got 100 games on it. Centipede, awesome. I'm under G. I do want to see Golden T. Oh, no Galaga. Oh, man. It's only got 100 games. 
This is missing some bangers. Mega Man. That's kind of cool. It's got a nice little video. I do wonder how the attract mode looks like, so let's just let that kind of sit while we look at the price of one of these machines. So, that's the attract mode, I guess, on this. Look, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I mean, uh, an arcade legend, whether it's a one, two, or three, somebody's got a one on eBay for $3,400. Oh, Lord. RK Legends, another one, eBay, 3200 A vending machine company that you could kind of buy it, like, you know, 2600 I wasn't expecting 100 games. But then again, I have to keep in mind that this is like a licensed thing, and Chicago Gaming Company probably got real licenses. That's a lot of money for $100, not to mention... There's not many fighters on this. At least you have Street Fighter. You got Street Fighter 2, let's run Champion Edition. Oh, press to start. That's nice. That's actually pretty nice. So it shows your instructions. That's cool. That's a very nice loading screen. Let's see how this loads though. The, the CRT looks amazing. If I, can I bring in player two? I had to press it, but. The CRT looks clean. I like the CRT on this. You stand right. Uh, wow. So exit. Oh, return to game. Exit game. Remove from favorites. So I can exit. Not bad. All right. Let's see one thing. I do want to see the trackball. Uh, I'm not a golden tea player, but I would assume people saw golden tea on this and was going crazy. Let's see how Golden Tea runs. Ah, you gotta remember to press start. I like this. I do like the menu. The 100 games though. Whoa, Golden Tea 2, choose from three courses. Whatever, press select. So the menu didn't really say much on here. Let's see how this track will go. We'll go 260. Ah. It's rough, the track wall is rough. Let's see, one more time. Whoa. Oh, what was that? Going back on that was a little rough, hold on. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to clean this. No, I didn't even pull all the way back. The track wall, I gotta clean it. Let's let's give it the benefit of the doubt there. But that should have been like a a full send. Track wall, I mean, again, golden tee. That's a full send there. All right, all right the track wall is nice. Bring it back to like my favorite. Let's do some centipede real quick, and let's see, does this save high scores? This is gonna be another one. Also, I don't think this even has Pac-Man. Move you over. All right, so we're in. Oh, Trackball is good for Centipede. It was a little rough for uh, Golden Tee. And it's not stretched. Uh, centipede right now is not stretched. I like this. Oh, shoot. <laughs> How am I gonna beat the highest score? So, high score of 16,000. Shouldn't be that bad. I'll fast forward so I don't bore you. 
All right, so definitely 17,000. I got the high score on this, so might as well just let this kind of drain. Tri balls are sponsored here. But in Golden Tea, it was a little rough. I'll open it. All right, we got 18,000. Great score and empty your initials. Awesome. Let's see. This is a little bit delicate. Ah, V, I, C. Boom. All right. Highest score, 18, 0, 3, 5. I wonder also how this works. Like, how does it exit a track mode? Or will it actually stay on this for now? I mean, I have a credit. All right, let's exit. Screw it. So I'm um, right now, let's just return to game. Let's just see, did it save 18.035? That's good, okay? So I'm gonna exit. Let's just go back to Centipede. Oh, I gotta get used to that. Fire. If it deleted it, it just showed, it just showed the, the, the oh my God. <laughs> Another system doesn't save high score, that. So, EJD doesn't save the high score. Disappointing. For $3,500, that is disappointing. So that's, honestly, that is a hefty price tag. Hefty. What's also crazy, this has a coin door on it, but it's fake. So I could push the coin reject, but the actual slot to put a coin in is blocked. And also the, let me show you. <laughs> So the actual slot, I this is blocked. I can't I can't even put my fingers in here. I could push the button, nothing's there, and look at that. I can't even push the flap. Let's get the key. This didn't come with keys. Let's take a look at the back. I'll show you the real quick the CRT because the inside of this is clean. That's interesting. I guess if I press this, it pushed the service menu. Is that right? Oh, okay. Adjustments, basically volume, diagnostics, controller tests. So nice little interface. So look at that, the down, I could launch up, but me going down, it's actually restricting it. That's why, I guess that's why Golden Tea sucks on this. See that? I can go up, I can go left. I'm gonna have to see if, anyway, let's take a look at the rear on this. Damn, $3,500 for this. Uh, again, amazing, immaculate condition. Look at the inside of this. I had the back door removed. Not even an ounce of dust as far, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. Again, CRT, look at like the, the board here. Now, I don't see a computer here. I see that, look at that. So that's where the coin door is. I'm gonna have to find a key. So studying this for like 10 minutes, I'm trying to look at stuff. You can't even open the coin door, like as if it's a latch. I basically discovered that there's four keys on the panel here, four keys, four screws. And now, look at that. And there it is, there's the key. Look at this. <laughs> there's the key. We can also see the system inside. So, to have trackball, again, I'm gonna have to see, that looks like the computer there, interesting. We have the power supply here, it's got serial numbers, and then look at this, the key here for the coin door, I need a screwdriver. So I grabbed the screwdriver, now I have the key in my hand. I'm anxious to see, look, another, another joystick without the gate. Interesting. Is that a new technique? But this is an eight-way. It's got no gate on it. Can you see that? Look at that. No gate. But the micro switches on this are definitely better than the cocktail table. These are closer. Interesting. Let's take a look at this coin door real quick. The P. Oh god. <laughs> that was not. I did see this block of wood there, and yes. That pushes the service button 
There's a random, it's a halogen here, but how is that, look at how that's mounted. This right here is controls for the CRT. So everything, everything is here with this little board? Really? This board, it's got a, a card here. It's got a JAMA connection. I don't know if you could see that. It's nicely constructed, can't lie. The control panel is unique, especially the artwork. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like, it's got like that hologram effect, but it doesn't actually do a hologram. It's got like just a sparkle look. Interesting, look at that. That's the control panel. The battens on the side keeps the screws in place. The glass, you can take the glass out. I don't know if this is worth $3,500 though. Now what, I can't get this back in? Line it up good. Lord. Ultimate Arcade, Chicago Gaming Company. Now they're doing pinball, which is pretty cool. I haven't experienced their pinballs, but they're doing like, you know, um, they did like the Cactus Canyon, like remaster. Uh, but yo, I'm gonna just send this ad to any future customers that complain about a two player Pandora box build price. Cause this is expensive for a hundred games. That, that is the, I was not expecting that. I was expecting like the hyperspin. Uh, and apparently I did quick research on it. I'm, I'm apparently thinking about the Ultracade. I looked at the price of an Ultracade PC and it's like 300 bucks. Just for the, uh, wow. I mean, again, I gotta keep in mind, this company, they've most likely got the license for stuff. I mean, it's got sort by games. It's got a nice interface, I can't lie. Atari, Capcom, Incredible Technologies, which has Golden Tee and World Class Bowling. We can actually load that up. Midway, and then Taito, Taito. Curve left, curve right. I haven't played bowling, so let's, I don't even know this type of bowling. World Class Bowling. <laughs> Keep in mind again, this company had to get licenses and all that. But. Give me my Capcom bowling all day. I love Capcom bowling. This. Ugh, not even like a cool animation like Capcom bowling. Oh, first strike, okay. So it's not like this, you could go back. Oh, give me that. <laughs> it's, listen, I, there's, there's a lot of pros and cons right now in my mind. The CRT is nice. 24, 25 inch CRT. I do like that, but now my vision is, and I'll tell you the plan with this, but again, company had to get the licenses. And it says here, licensed by Atari, Licensed by Taito or Taito, whichever you want to call it. The trackball I probably just have to open up. It's definitely just been sitting. Give me that. Oh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, what was I? Not, let me tell you now the plans. Let's, let's go over the plans now with this. Let's get rid of the music. So here's the plans. Here's the options that I have. So again, right now, customer, let me take these. I, I don't keep these. Keep that in mind, please. I. I have no interest in these. This is nice strictly because of the CRT, but I do not like the system on this. This is ultimate arcade. It's more like ultimate crap for 32 to $3,500. That is a lot of money. And again, this is dated back on 2006. I did look up real quick. There's an ultimate arcade three. It has 120 games on it or 130. That's nothing. <laughs> but again, it is a licensed thing. Now we're going back and forth like Arcade 1-Up right now. Uh, you know, why do they make so many versions of Pac-Man? Because they have the license for it. They got to take advantage of it. They don't have, for example, the license for Neo Geo and Metal Slug. So 
That's where modifying comes into it. Now, like I said, here's the plan. Customer right now, like I said, he said, Vic, open these up, test them, make sure they work. If it needs parts, let me know, bill me for the parts and all that. These work. I'm not totally a fan of the joysticks on the cocktail table. I would personally change that to four-way, but right now I have the add up for this as is. I don't really explain much in that until somebody, you know, putting it in a Facebook ad and saying, oh, I could change the joysticks. Now it's like people go, oh, so it should be a cheaper price. I don't, if you want more details on they they hit me up. But yes, what's gonna happen right now is that these will sell as is. Take it or leave it as is, or I would give the option for an upgrade. In all honesty, like with this, I would minimum, I would put a Pandora's box in this. Uh, the only thing though is that this does have a trackball. I have yet to find a Pandora's box that could do a trackball. Um, not to mention, this doesn't have like a VGA HDMI connection to the CRT. Uh, this is JAMA connected. So I would either have to look for a JAMA connection type of board, Pandora Box JAMA and not a home edition, or I would look at modifying the connectors for the monitor. But again, I right now would sell this as is with the option to upgrade. That's how I usually do these things. So again, in my mind with this cocktail table, me personally, I would rather have a bigger screen. Um, I haven't sat down, he did give me stools for the cocktail table. I haven't sat down and played it. It's just, I don't know. Right now I was playing it hunched over. Not a fan, kind of hurts the back. That's why like I said I'd rather have a vertical cabinet. Um, but I should put it down on the floor and then sit in the stool. Uh, again, this one, I would probably put like a Mr. Burns image, maybe a 901. Or if I modify the joysticks and the buttons, I would put, again, Raspberry Pi's are just old. Uh, I don't like using Pi's anymore, but I do have like two Pi 3B pluses laying around, so I could always modify it. It doesn't cost me anything because I have them. Uh, but that's what I would do for this. And again, I would definitely modify the screen. If I could put like, I, it looks like I think I could put like a 25 to 27 inch screen on that. But now you're talking about cutting wood and modifying. Artwork on this is bleh. It's very bleh. <laughs> it's based, I don't even know if it's an actual vinyl. It might just be a piece of paper. But that's that. This right here definitely is going to be a hard sell. If he paid $3,200 for this, I, I, I see it on Facebook Marketplace now. These go for about $600. Bucks. I, the interface is nice, don't get me wrong. But 100 games for $3,500, $3,200, that's a lot of money. That's a lot. I, right now, I would be happy to put a Pandora's box in this, sell it as is. The trackball, I have to see now, I think the trackball is just tied into like the joysticks. It's, again, it's a JAMA harness. It's not USB and all that, so there's a lot of things to go with. But yeah, so that is the deal. I basically hold these now, I don't charge for storage. Unless it goes past like two months, then I go, listen, you gotta take this back because I have no room here. But uh, this should be a quick sell, uh, again, Selling as is or option to upgrade. There you guys have it. That is the story on this kind of haul crane game. You guys saw the last video on that. There you go. Vic VP Game Case Arcades Ultimate Arcade 2. More like Ultimate shit. It's it's man. Like I said, I could just send this to customers that complain and bitch and moan about my price. You know, I just send them this. And go get this. <laughs> again, granted though, the CRT is beautiful. It is a very clean CRT. Again, granted, from 2006 till now, the dudes had it sitting. So I would not expect anything less than that. But yes, there you guys have it. Stay tuned. I don't know what videos are coming up next. Uh, maybe you'll see me modify this. I don't know if I get the customer for it. Yes. Big VP. Game case arcade. Love it. I love seeing a CRT. It's, it's a beautiful sight. But it's a pain in the ass to maintain. Especially if they blow, it's a pain in the ass to maintain.